I am here with the incomparable boyfriend. Incomparable. How else would you describe yourself? I don't know, but that's a good one. Thanks. Oh, I'm going to try and <laughs> list just off the top of my head all your different jobs and or professions, right? Okay. Singer, songwriter, rapper, performer, playwright? Did I read that properly? Would you consider yourself a thespian as well? I was president of the Thespian Society. And, okay. And I, Activist? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. How how do you find all the time? How do you <laughs> how do you keep going? How do you Well a lot of those I, I do all at once, which is convenient. Yeah, that definitely helps. They overlap. That definitely helps. They overlap. Well you're forgetting um, sleep enthusiast. Yeah, I think we all need to be sleep enthusiasts. And almost part-time professional organizer okay explain that a little bit well I, I used to literally do it for a job but now I just do it for my aunts and my moms and I love it very much like it energizes me like crazy and I think in a parallel universe that would be my full-time gig really? it energizes me more than anything else like if I'm having trouble like I'm so jazz fest is coming up yes. and I'm trying to choreograph these numbers so mm -hmm. I guess choreographer technically yes now choreographer as well so um, and I was like hitting a wall and so I was like I know I'll go reorganize the shed and it like it opened it, it up gave, it's a flow state for you it's a flow state that's amazing yeah. and it's interesting because for a lot of people it takes away their flow or for sure spoon, spoon it's theory? the spoon theory no enlighten me um, so it, it, it was invented by a person I can't remember what autoimmune disease or some sort of disease that doesn't present physically okay and so she was trying to explain what it is like to live her life to her friend and they were at this restaurant and there were all these spoons everywhere because it was an empty table uh -huh. and so she took like 10 of the spoons and she said okay so like here's your day you start with these 10 spoons you take a shower that takes one of your spoons you drive to work that takes another okay you're trying to illustrate how energy is used and she said for me i start my day with five spoons and how we all have spoons being taken and given to us at different times because all of us function energetically with things in different ways. For so sure. So for instance, my sister, if you want to take all her spoons away, ask her to reorganize the shit. If you want to give me spoons, ask me to reorganize the shit. And so that's why we need each other because... The yin and the yin. Yeah, like the different things that we do. So, some One person gets wiped by one thing and the other person gets energized by that thing. That's incredible. Yeah, when you think about it that way, some people, specifically energy, Talk about a show. We'll talk about before a show, especially a boyfriend show mm -hmm. at Jazz Fest, say. There will be musicians, dancers, management, agents. It's, it's like a circus, and some people thrive off that energy before a show. For me, I don't want it before and a little bit after, but like 10 minutes after. Well, but who am I to tell somebody what their proper spoon is? intake or distribution is right right so, yeah i'm trying to find a way to connect it but. well and i feel like i should say as a caveat that it's so spoon theory and like the idea of your spoons being taken i think has become a like i've seen bumper stickers for it for people that do have like maybe neurodivergent uh -huh. or any sort of like non-physically presenting uh like handicap like something yes. that would affect their ability to function in their day so that's how it became sort of viral but then now it's like working its way into just like I'm really big into like personal growth and therapy and stuff like that. So am I. Yeah, we can so we can dive it, in. That's where it's like become sort of a little colloquial saying. But I I'm, I would hope I'm not like stepping on toes by using it as someone who does not have one of those. No, I think you're trying to put a positive light on it, and you're trying to help people, right? And I think it's it used to be kind of a faux pas this mental health discovery or. If you want to see a, a therapist or a shrink, I don't even think they call them shrink, but you <laughs> no. were a quack. Yeah. Where now I think oh, if anybody needs it as like a mental reset and it's it's mind, body, and soul now, which is important. Amen. Well, I think of it like the gym. I mean, I'm oh, much yeah, more better sure. at going to therapy than I am at going to the gym. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like you don't just go to the gym like once you've broken your leg because you're too weak to climb the staircase. Exactly. You go to the gym constantly all the time so that you can walk up the stairs and so that's that's what it is for me now I also am clinically depressed and yes. also gen have general anxiety disorder so I have like real chemical reasons to go but I think anyone can and should go because it's like uh, I guess maybe this is also the Leo in me but it's like aren't you fascinated with yourself 
<laughs> don't I, you want to like pop open the more, lid and like dig around a little? <laughs> but I don't I don't know what the the right astrological sign would which would be the inverse of that, but some people are terrified yeah, to go with that it. That astrological sign is dude. <laughs> it's dude. I'm a Taurus. Where do I fall in that? I, some days I feel like I want to crack it open, and other days I feel like I, I want to hide away from it. But it's it's a, it's a life. We're just trying to have thrown what's thrown at us and yeah. try and make it out on the other side. I, I do want to ask you some questions. You're talking about organization. Do you think any of that has helped you in your career? Yes. Because of all these different hats that you do wear, which uh, from my perspective, it, I don't want to see it seems draining, but it's daunting because you're, you're constantly doing a ton of different things. I think that the, the different things feed and, and energize each other. So okay. like, okay, this is like insider scoop. But during the pandemic, I went and worked with my mom at a bed and breakfast. Okay. And I was like literally cleaning toilets, folding sheets, like knock, 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 housekeeping. Yeah. Like that was me. That was your reality. And I did that. I was literally doing that. Uh, the day before, I was flown to Los Angeles, put up in the W Hotel Hollywood to attend the Space Jam premiere because I had written a song that was in the movie. And so <laughs> the I have long abandoned the concept that A, success is linear. It okay. doesn't necessarily like look like this. And then that B, that like, once you're one thing you have to be that one thing because yes. like everything is to me like an adventure and the objectivity of doing the bed and breakfast work that i was doing uh was a great counterbalance to the grand gray slippery gray area that is artistry like is yes. a song ever done yeah is a song ever good like who, who knows but that bed is either made or it's not made and the surface the is either wiped it. Or, it, or it isn't so like the i i kind of needed those two different like I started doing it because it was like a way to hang out with my mom and make some money during the uh, pandemic. And then I ended up keeping on doing it a little bit late, longer than I probably bit. needed to because it was so, um, yeah, it was just, it was like giving tangible. You spoons. It was giving me spoons. It was giving you spoons. Yeah. It's funny you mention that because similar, I remember specifically, we opened for Imagine Dragons at a, like a stadium in Dallas. And then I remember I flying home that night and then walking the dog and I'm like picking up the dog's poop and thinking like, man, a few hours ago there was just a ton of people screaming and playing. How do you handle that? Because I know a lot of people that have issues, like you're saying, of trying to be on all the time or only thinking they need to wear one of these hats. And it seemed like from your perspective when you're at the bed and breakfast, it was really grounding and, and humbling and you needed that to not maybe get in over your head for the artistry side, which can require a ton more bandwidth and energy and, and just thoughtfulness. Yeah, I think I do sometimes struggle with the transition between worlds. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm an interloper in in every sense of it. Like, okay. if you listen to my Spotify page, like, you're all over. It's, I'm a sonic inter interloper it, as well. Oh, yeah, I'm, that's, that, we'll know, get to that later. It's like, yeah. I'm a visitor of scenes and I always have been, like, all through school and everything. I never had, like, these are my eight friends. Uh -huh. It's like I'm the satellite friend to a bunch of other people's groups. And my family itself is like located in like three different places. And so I, like growing up, I'd be like either with my dad or with my mom or like down in one of the fam like grandparent Somewhere zones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the grandparent zones were a whole other world because it was like rural Georgia and rural Alabama. Um, and we spent a lot of time there. So anyway, my point being is that like I have, I've always felt like um, you don't fit word? in one box. I mean, no. I guess none of us. None of us. None do. of us do. But you, you're uh, in terms of you weren't associated with a certain clique. You were yeah, friends yeah, with yeah. all different kinds of people. You found commonality well, with a ton of different hence, people. Working with the revivalists, I think that's one of the, my favorite, most joyful things is being on stage with y'all. Whereas if you just look straight up, like digitally, like maybe if you just compared our Instagram pages, we're in such different mm -hmm. worlds. For like sure. aesthetically for sure and i don't think that i should only work with people who like dress the way that i do or like do photo shoots that yeah like that's not fun or, yeah that's no fun doing the same it's thing like, over and over again and also it's like way. we we have so much more in common in terms of things that do matter of course so it's like i might not have like the same type of guitar sounds on my songs but we like want to see a similar future when we like have conversations about like society definitely yeah when we're trying to talk all you know? highbrow yeah 
No, so I, it's like I that, agree. I just think that like that is an adventurous expansive way to live and I've always wanted to like be on my deathbed and like look back at my life and see like a quilt you know just like oh there's that patch where that was happening and there's that patch where that was happening and I do think sometimes there's sadness and grief there because if I had been able to just be like a little more singularly uh -huh. focused then I probably would be further along in any one of those avenues uh -huh. um, so sometimes I'm like hmm <laughs> about that but it's, yeah it's never been who I was I've never woken up every day like I'm gonna be X and that like, I've never had that sort of like um, defining drive ambition I kind of From always wake up like what's gonna fall in front oh I'll do this and just sort of what falls in front of my face well you grew up in a musical family right yeah so was that something that was forced on you at a young age because you know there's there's some parents that <laughs> want to live vicariously through their kids if they're doing something or they want them to do something or will kind of like usher them along into hobbies and or career passions and that was not the case oh god me. i wasn't even ushered at all like my one beef with my mom uh -huh. who's like my best friend my one beef and she knows this is that she let me quit piano lessons yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. I, I basically, yeah. I was a really good kid. I, yeah. I never like misbehaved and stuff. I'm like, sure, I like would like smoke pot and have sex in high school. And yeah, shit. but even then, I like your mom smile. Were we all? <laughs> <laughs> the rule was like, don't lie to us. That was like just like about it's where fair. you are. Like, tell us where you are. And so, basically, we had such a, a sort of a transparent thing that I kind of could just do what I wanted because we had this intense trust. And so it, that meant like when I was like, I don't like this, and then she was like, okay. I, but she took me for my word and was like, okay, you don't have to do it. And now I'm like, damn it, mom, you should have been, Piano, why could, yeah. you couldn't have like spanked me or something? <laughs> yeah, <have>. right, <laughs> you I'm gonna take away your lessons. It's, now that we're full-blown adults, we realize proficiency at piano is just opens up a world of possibilities oh God. that yeah. people don't understand until they have that power. Or even like, no, I don't even know the keys. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, like yeah. what keys is I'm like yeah whatever one it is in is the one I want it to be key in key lime pie <laughs> key, key lime pie that's a good one I don't know Granted, it's like, a good one nothing's stopping me from you know teaching myself these things yeah. I, every day I wake up and like don't decide to like <laughs> yeah. become pick more up the piano knowledgeable with this thing that I can be knowledgeable of. but um anyways no it was if anything it was the opposite my dad was a successful songwriter in Nashville in the 90s country boom mm -hmm. and was like, I remember him even saying, lightning doesn't strike twice. Yeah. Like, it's like, very don't, difficult. Don't do this. <laughs> don't yeah, try to do this. That's basically. just being a loving father, knowing yeah. the realities of it. And, you know, my son's in daycare and one of the teachers was like, oh, like he, he shows really good rhythm when he's like clapping. And they're like, I'm like, oh, I'm a musician. He's like, oh, that's great. Do you want him to be a musician? I'm thinking to myself, like, I think I'm going to tell me a fucking accountant, dude. <laughs> but I, you want your kid to do whatever they want and follow their dreams and passions. But for you specifically, you saw someone, you grew up with someone where this, there is a line to this. This is attainable. So was songwriting and music, did you know that you wanted to be a career with that early mm -hmm. on? Or, oh, gosh. No. Yeah. It took me, like, the what longest. Was, what was your first... What was uh, the first thing you wanted to be? Well, I was going to be a filmmaker. Okay. And you still can be a filmmaker. that's why I went to UCLA and like went out to Los okay. Angeles um, and was working in film and TV. And it was only like, I was, wor I was working on Gossip Girl. Okay. TV show at the time when I first, first started rapping. And I, there was this really long hallway to get to the copier. And when I would walk back and forth to the copy machine, I just sort of started like, yeah Un under my breast little started, cadence like, going yeah writing these raps and um i then maybe like three or four months went by of me just sort of writing them and like sharing them with friends you know like mm -hmm. it was like a party trick it was fun. It was type fun. thing um but apparently i don't remember this maybe i've blocked it out maybe my dad invented it but apparently i set my dad down and okay. was like i'm the best rapper alive <laughs> how old were you at this point too old. Too old. Like 22 or and 23 years old. And you were living in L.A.? At the yeah, time? I was either in L.A. or, or here. Yeah. Pretty much once I graduated college, I started straddling the country between New Orleans and L.A. Um, but as I don't remember that part, but I do remember sitting him down and being like, I'm doing some music stuff. Like, I'm going to record things. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want your help at all. Like, that's not why I'm coming to you. I'm just letting you know that I'm doing this. 
Uh -huh. um, and then sure enough, he was like, well, do you want to like record here? Because he always had a studio set up at home. Yeah. Um, and we did record a few things together, which was really fun because my dad has a super uh, incredible sense of humor and he's like very irreverent. Um, and so the early, even early boyfriend, especially was even more like humor based sure. and raunchy. Uh, yeah. Um, and like we had a blast recording that early stuff. You know, with like cunt and dick and all these. But, you know, all those. I'll never have to bleep that. No, you're fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> like every other word was like, mm, mm, you know, like a little yeah. bit wincy. Um, but yeah, it's he's in such a different uh, like silo of music that it wasn't like yeah, he could be like. Nineties oh, country you is that. not dealing with, you know. I don't want to say you're provocateur, but there's definitely an irreverence in some capacity, maybe in the older material, that is not what mainstream country would want. And I, I appreciate the fact that you're not necessarily just trying to go down that lane where you, you could write a country song, I know, if you wanted to tomorrow. And I, you don't seem like the kind of person that wears a specific kind of hat musically in terms of a songwriter because you write for a ton of different people in a ton of different capacities. Well, I think that it's for me because I, I do think it's different for, for different people and uh, I write with my brain mm. where some people write with their heart yeah um, but I think of it as a craft that I have a high level of competency in mm -hmm. and so once you have the craft you can apply it in regardless of the the trappings of genre you uh -huh. can apply that craft to, to whichever thing understood now someone who's who's writing from their heart and was you know born and bred in like x genre is going to probably be able to open up their mouth and just like soar mm -hmm. in, in that genre but i think one of the reasons i'm a really great co-writer is because i can bring that sort of um academic analytical brain like technical aspect to a heart writer. Like I think a head writer and a heart writer make the best collab team because then you get that some of that just like raw like vomit stuff that makes yeah. for great moments. Yeah. Um, and then I can like I'll like take someone's bucket of vomit and then like <laughs> <laughs> and you turn it into beautiful <laughs> art. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I, that I really went I was like, I'm just gonna go keep going down this vomit path. Um, but yeah, I mean that's not to say that like I don't do vomit songs. Like a lot of boyfriend songs are that way. Um, Dead Yet is one that just was like I love that song I by the know. way it's I love it too when it's, you first showed it to us because it's uh, as when we back up Sue's you know about a month or so out we'll, we'll get the list and when I first heard that recording I was like this is like an evil kind of sinister vibe that you had never towed that line that much but just like sonically I was like this is fucking dope and that's but it's great from you have songs that skin a bunch of different styles and you don't seem or strike me as the person that's like oh this song needs to sound this way i need a song that covers this topic i need something with a certain kind of beat this way it just it comes naturally you're not trying to necessarily put your music into a box i think i would probably benefit from more boxiness to be honest because the algorithm likes a box Those and the algorithms. industry likes the box. Yeah, they do. Um, and it's taken me a long time to come to terms with like, with that because I I used to be very like, yeah. And now I'm kind of like, all right, yeah, yeah. I could be there. It's you know hindsight. Like I've been doing this a decade now, and I can look back and be like, oh, that decision led to that, and uh -huh. that decision led to, and I can like For see sure. it. And it's not that it's regret so much as just knowing. But it's, I think, experience, and that's what it comes down to for stuff like that and, and being vulnerable and open and and not being scared to go for it, so to speak. Instead of like, oh, I haven't done this one specific thing yet, I'm going to try it, instead of second-guessing yourself, basically. It's funny you say the, the not being scared thing, because like... Everybody's scared. Yeah, though. I think about... Everybody I'm, totally is scared. I'm a terrified person. Yeah. <laughs> and people will... Like at the merch table and, and things, or like in my DMs and comments, I'll be like, "You're just so brave," You're, and I was just like, "I am." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't yeah. think so. Like, I passed out when I had to like get some blood taken two weeks ago, yeah. and like I like have a panic attack if the plane is too crowded. And, but I am able to be on stage in front of thousands of people in a thong, so maybe that's... Yeah, I, and, and it's subjective in itself <laughs> what people view as brave, but yeah. if, if somebody 
somebody views you as brave and what they perceive as brave, yeah, they also they might actually administer those needles for blood every time. So exactly. the thought is that getting on stage in the thong seems and saying what I'm saying seems crazy, but it's don't tell yourself short. Right. I don't think you should do well, that. Well, it kind of is full circle ish to the spoon thing that it's yeah, like for sure. Like one person's brave step forward is another person's like oh i just tripped out the door it wasn't a big deal yeah um and that i think that applies to me with the, the on stage stuff like i definitely get nervous before shows like that, that means you care that's important yeah. i think nerves are a good thing that pre-show thing you're talking about like i don't do the like let's all hang and talk and like take a shot before the show I'm yeah like, i mean you've seen me yeah i'm like I I need to be more like that, but I realize the best way for me to do that is just leave the situation. Where yeah. before I'd say, "All right, nobody's allowed back here for the last ten minutes," and blah blah blah. Now I'm just gonna leave myself instead of trying to force all these people to adhere to what I want or do what I don't or set something down. It's easier for me to remove myself from that equation. But yeah, it's everybody is different in that perspective. It doesn't matter. You need to do what you need to do to get ready, but the nerves yeah. are always there. I think if you don't have nerves, it means, I don't think you're not as passionate, you, just, you don't care. Even if you're going through the motions, there's an excitement, there's chemicals being produced in your body that are letting you know something amazing is about to happen. Yeah, the, the diarrhea chemicals. The diarrhea chemicals, yeah. <laughs> and, and how everybody's chemicals react differently to how you I, play I before. I love how on this show, like, Cleaning toilets, yeah. vomit, vomit, like, diarrhea. Let's get right to the, let's get right Dick, to the cunt. <laughs> all these, all these great words. But we do. Me and my dancers, like we do, have a little like song that we do. That's it's time for the pre-show poop. It's time for the pre-show poop. And we like cheer each other on to like go into the bathroom, and then we like sing really loud so that you like can't hear what's it, whatever's going on in there. So in case someone needs a little nervous time, of course they can they can have it. Because like especially with us, like with the type of costumes and stuff we're in, it's like. A lot of changes, yeah. You're about to be up there with like maybe an inch of fabric over your actual butthole. So you want to make sure that so, it's it's looking as presentable as you possible. Gotta like, yeah, you've got to get ready on like a deep level. Man, <laughs> have you ever thought about doing a Brazilian wax sponsorship with anybody before? This could be your opportunity. <laughs> That'd be so cruel to encourage people to that to do that. It's so painful. I, you know, I, I not, know not, to, not to go down that, that line. I It's something I... I don't know about, but I know it's a thing that is done. But it seems like it would be a difficult thing to do. I've only gone down that road a few times. So painful. Well, I'm, I'm glad you did it on my behalf. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you did it on my. Let, let's talk about the the dancers. Okay. Since yeah. when did that element start evolving into your stage show? Because it is incredibly theatrical, and I can speak on behalf of us in the band playing with you. We had never dave has taken his shirt off and i wouldn't call that a costume change <laughs> but there in in the production rider there is a certain area blocked off so people can change and to whatever aesthetic is needed for that particular song and that's a that comes from musical theater and plays and also some of these big pop acts that you see all the time was that something you always intended yes i think that the there's like a two-pronged aspect of it one prong is just like efficient storytelling that uh -huh. the, the visual component is helping me drive home the point of whatever I was saying when I was writing the song uh -huh. um, and that musical theater influence like I just I'm a musical nerd from way back okay like when when I like I'll just go to musicals by myself whenever there's an opportunity to go to New York like like Wonderful. I show in Burlington I'll like oh I'll just fly to New York and, fly, blah, 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 and I just like went by myself to go thing. see it yeah um, I love them but then there's this other side of it which is um, I don't, I, I do now to an extent, but I didn't have any confidence in my voice, in my singing voice. Okay. Partly because of my familiar, familial background, where I have like great vocalists and also like perfect pitch viola and violin playing symphony writing, cele or like not celebrity, real, uh, relatives. Real musicians, cousins. yeah, professionals. Um, yeah, and I, I'm not a great vocalist, which I. I can sing and I can like pull it off and it's fine, but that's not like part of my like artist identity or like uh -huh. artist mythology. Um, and so I wanted to like throw other things at the show to compensate for that from, okay. from day one. That was part of it for me. It was like, you know, well, I better like do this costume change so that, you know, yeah, there's something else. I was trying to compensate. Trying to deviate a little bit of 
the energy. Yeah. But I think it, it completely adds to the show, though. At this point, it's Yeah, now, it's evolved now that, yeah. it, that it's just like, I can't imagine it without it. But from the very, very beginning, when I was just getting up there by myself, it was a way for me to, almost, it was almost like an uh, apology. Uh -huh. Like, well, let me give you something else to, to look at since yeah, you, you felt not you that great. You weren't uh, compensating you know. in a particular and, and any time I had been on stage before was with like, you know, 30 people doing choreography behind me during yeah. the solo of sh during the show choir competition or whatever. Different. So like I'd only ever been on stage with Razzle Dazzle. And so it didn't make sense to not have Interesting. that. Like just the idea of like getting on stage and just standing there and singing a song like it's with the guitar. Here. Yeah, you're like, no, that's, I mean, that's, that's brave. That's, <laughs> that's brave. That's what's brave. Yeah. Well, okay, but you do these shows with full band, full backup singers, but you'll also, you've done shows at showcases and stuff where you're just singing to a track. How do you appreciate that differently and how do you approach that compared to having, it's, only, it's like playing with just a guitar at that point if you just have the track there. Well, I can plan things down to the millisecond when it's a track show. Mm -hmm. So For my sure, typical yeah. like touring show is like I know like this is the part where I drink the water and when like I hear this hi hat kick in, my thong has to be on or else I'm not making my quick change or yeah. and so it's very one thing that's nice about that is that it is kind of like go. And it's like this goes here, this goes here, da 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 da. Um, and, I, and I like the container of it because every aspect has been thought through and considered. Um, and that's that like organizing thing. Exactly. It's like my backstage is so much more important than my on stage because if if that like bra is moved two inches to the left, I might miss my quick change. And so it's like everything has to be laid out exactly. Um, but it also means that the track is in control. That Very once true. once it's hit, it's like I'm not in control anymore. I'm just doing the things that I've invented for myself to do for this next hour. And one of the things I love so much about performing with y'all is the the looseness of it is it's like you know what let's take eight bars so i can get a drink of water yeah whereas like in my track show it's like well i won't be able to drink water for three more songs okay that's all right i just gotta <laughs> yeah it's a different level of um awareness where i think eventually it, it think about it on the front end to do an, an orchestrated show takes so much time and effort when everything's down to the T. But once you have that locked in, you're just going through the motions. Where the looseness is something that it requires maybe less trying on the front. When you're in the moment, you have to really be paying attention, almost more so if you don't know where the cues are or you have something coming in your ears telling you when to change and stuff like that. But it's it's interesting hearing that. And I, I think you could do both incredibly well. You know, there's I don't think Dang. there's anything you shouldn't be brave about. The fact that you're a female rapper in the 21st century speaking your mind and you know being you and authentic is a uh, it's important and we need more voices like yours well thank you and thanks for so often sharing stage with me because it, yeah. it is such a blast yeah but uh i want to wrap you up thank you so much for coming <laughs> on here and what are we going to see next from you what do you what, what are you willing to tell people you're excited about We'll start with Jazz Fest, just your summer. What's what's going on? Uh, well, I will tease that my next project okay. is going to be hearkening back to those theatrical roots okay. even more strongly. And I'm, I'm very excited about it. I've been working on this thing for like seven years. <laughs> okay. Not like straightforward seven years, yeah. but it's like... I'm in an abusive relationship with this project, basically, <laughs> where we've like That's we've been long distance, we've been open, we've been, had crying fights in the rain, we've had great makeup sex, but me and this project are like finally going to just go for it and walk down the aisle, and I'm so ready to share it with the world, um, and it'll be sprinklings of it will will come this winter. At the end Amazing. Of the year. Well, we're going to have to talk. This time next year, we'll be. Let's uh, talk again at that point, and then we can discuss yeah. that. So, cool. thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for awesome. having me. Bye.